The Democratic Republic of Congo is one of the largest countries in Africa, with over 80 million people. But what if you have a medical emergency? You might have trouble accessing fast and effective care. Congo medical schools currently don't provide their students with specific emergency medicine training. Most emergency rooms do not have the basic equipment to handle critical medical, trauma, and other surgical cases. That's where an organization like Hand Up Congo comes in. It's a small, nonprofit organization working in Congo in collaboration with other individuals and health oriented groups. With its help, two doctors are delivering training and life saving techniques to medical staff and students across the Congo. Dr. Muller Mundinga is one of the few specifically trained emergency medicine doctors working in Congo. With the support of Hand Up Congo, Muller visits various hospitals to show their staff how to handle emergency situations. Uh, okay. Bonjour. It's old male, high grade fever, and diagnosis they are working on malaria. We'll take blood sample for investigations. After that, they will start a specific treatment from, uh, for malaria. Muller inspects a rural hospital to see if the facility is prepared to handle emergency cases. No, not like Do we have the blood glucose? It has a strong pulse. So one week ago, he went in coma and no CT scan here, so they would like to bring the patient in Kinshasa. Here they would like to know if there is a problem inside the brain, so they need CT scan, but the patient can't afford the money to go there. Mm -hmm. oh, another problem, here we should have the reservoir bag. And they receive this machine, but they don't know to use it. Okay, and this is common in our country where people are donated things but no training how to use it. I want you to know how they will know that there is oxygen inside because no indication, nothing. Operating, you come here to wash hands, rub. It's not running. Yeah. This is not, at this time it's not working. No medication. Yeah. Nothing, no respirator. So I need, um, I need to sit with you yeah. and to, to do what we are calling the checklist. Dr. Muller instructs the staff of a rural hospital how to handle a cardiac arrest situation. Quelle façon, quelle est la bonne manière d'approcher un malade aux urgences? Okay, c'est ça la chanson qui était validée par l'association américaine, donc American Heart Association, pour vous donner le rythme de savoir que vous n'allez pas trop... Ok, super. Faites ceci. Ok. Ok, venir à tour de rôle. Suivez ça. Dr. Vera Sistinik is a specialist emergency physician working in Australia. She has traveled to hospitals across the Congo to teach time-critical, life-saving interventions. The Democratic Republic of Congo is one of the poorest countries on earth, where the top 10 causes of mortality still include largely preventable diseases. Why is this the case? Well, this is largely a symptom of extreme poverty and very limited access not only to medical equipment, but also to the most basic medical knowledge. Just a few pieces of simple equipment, along with a little sound knowledge, can stand to improve or even save lives. So we at Hand Up Congo, a small non-profit organization, work with the Université Protestant au Congo, or UPC, which is a very well-respected university. 
It now trains doctors across the Congo and has a network of training hospitals scattered across the country. We have traveled to these hospitals and, to date, have trained over 400 doctors, nurses and medical students in skills such as basic life support, advanced life support, resuscitation, bedside ultrasound and other time-critical interventions which form the essence of emergency medicine. On a recent Hand Up Congo medical mission, we travelled by dugout canoe with local staff and our volunteers to a remote village called Lutumbe. The return trip took us about two days in a motorised dugout canoe, covering a distance of about 600 kilometres through one of the most remote and difficult to access parts of the country. There was very little infrastructure, no roads, no electricity. The reception that we received, filled with joyous singing and prayers of gratitude for our safe arrival, was one of the most moving experiences of my time in the Congo. <laughs> Dr. Vera's trip with Hand Up Congo, up a tributary of the Congo River to a hospital in the remote village of Lotumbe, facilitated local doctors' ability to save lives in emergency situations. Parce qu'avant, on perdait beaucoup de malades. Et par des par moments, il fallait transférer les malades à plus de 200 km d'ici pour que ils aillent euh, à, à, puissent avoir la vie sauve. Malheureusement, avec la distance, on perdait beaucoup de malades. Mais avec ça, aujourd'hui, on peut facilement récupérer des malades à notre niveau. On avait du mal à intuber les malades ou à faire le gavage. Et donc, euh, on le faisait très difficilement et puis c'était difficile de récupérer les malades. Mais après, quand on a ça avec Dr Vera, ça nous a aidé à pouvoir euh, récupérer certains malades le plus rapidement possible. Congo doesn't need expensive, high-end and complicated emergency room equipment. It needs effective training of its medical staff and some simple life-saving tools. Then the 80 million Congolese will have a great chance of Staying alive. Staying alive.